FNAF has an incredibly messed up story, and the deeper you look at it, the worse it becomes. But, you know what? That's my goddamn job. So, those horrific deeds that FNAF characters have committed, human and animatronic alike, are what we're exploring today. Let's do it. In a 10 killed their brother. Ah, joy. Right off the bat. Or at least, they tried to. Since we play as Michael in every game of the original series, with the exception of FNAF 4 and 7, Michael is always the one in danger. And since Baby is after us as the player in FNAF 5 and 6, she is legit trying to kill her brother. And she does so in such a menacing way. Being able to absolutely slaughter your brother without a moment's thought is probably one of the most messed up things that Baby could have done. But, if we're being honest at this point, she was kind of nuts, so I think that it's better to put her up higher on the list. Like, honestly, thinking about this, in the fifth game, she wasn't really trying to kill him. Just get inside of him, which sounds awful when you say it out loud, but in Pizzeria Simulator, she definitely wanted to kill you, okay? And then during her final speech, she even thinks that it's what her father would want. So needless to say, she's pretty out of it at this point, but it makes it slightly more forgiving, but not by much. And at nine, no choice. While he may have had issues killing Afton, for whatever reason, Henry Emily just seems to be fine offing Afton's son when he gets the chance. I mean, in both fires set by Henry that we see, FNAF 3 and 6, Michael was there both times, and he didn't seem to care that Michael was in the building. He didn't even give Michael the opportunity to exit in FNAF 6, despite there having been a way out planned. Quote from Henry's final speech, And to you, my brave volunteer, who somehow found this job listing not intended for you. Although there was a way out planned for you, I have a feeling that's not what you want. I have a feeling that you are right where you want to be. He has a feeling? Like, you assume that I also want to die in these halls and then don't give me the chance to actually make that decision for myself? You just, he forces us to die since he doesn't give us a way out. But sorry, man, but that's murder, okay? Whether we wanted it or not, assisted suicide is still illegal, at least for the majority of the states, from my understanding. So either way, this is a crime. But again, he doesn't give us the option, so it makes it more of a murder-suicide than an assisted self-offing. And it ain't nothing. <laughs> Michael Afton's biggest sin in my mind is his ability to do nothing. Like, sure, he seems to be playing the good guy going after his father, but really, Michael to me just seems like he's been playing hero this whole time and not really doing anything. Sure, he says he's trying to right his father's wrongs and whatnot, but looking at him, not doing it because he's a good person, he's doing it because he feels bad and not because of some higher moral code. He blames himself for getting his brother killed, which, I mean, is accurate, which then subsequently means that anything he does, he's doing to try to make himself feel better about his mistakes. Because in the end, nothing will really bring his little brother back. Well, I mean, that's a whole other story. But I mean, he, he doesn't even really have the gall, the, the nuts, the, the balls, the cojones to actually stop his father once and for all. He says that he's going to come find him, but then when he does in FNAF 6, he doesn't burn the place down to stop him. Henry has to do it. Henry is the only one who's actually willing to eventually sack up and actually try to stop William. And that just shows how serious Michael actually is, okay? If he really wanted to make sure that William was stopped, he wouldn't have let himself burn in the FNAF 6 fire either, okay? He would have forced his way out. But he does, okay? He lets it happen. He sits in the room. Just so that he won't have to feel regret of his brother dying and, like, having the curse of knowledge since he knows what his father was doing. It's messed up. And at 7, letting fate decide. FNAF 6 was supposed to be the end of the Afton story. I really hoped it would be. That's what Henry sets out to do in this game. Make sure that nobody remembered what happened there, despite the parents of the victims definitely remembering, unless he killed them too. However, this figured that the first fire didn't work, so the second one surely will. And in fact, he was so confident in this plan for whatever stupid reason that he actually let himself die in the process. Quote, leave nobody remembering what happened or whatever. But like I said, even if Henry and William and his son are dead, the parents of the victim still remember. And as we learned from Security Breach duffel bags, there are parents who remember too, despite not having kids in the past, citing the missing children from the Pizzaplex as happening again. If Henry had stuck around to see if the job was really done like around a hearthstone, maybe William wouldn't have been able to possess Vanny and then come back yet again to wreak more havoc. The Pizza Flex missing children are a direct result of Henry just straight up being a moron. And you can't tell me any different. He should have lit the place up, smashed everything that survived, and then after he was 100% sure that Afton was dead after the goddamn autopsy, that's when you can off yourself. And it's six, betrayal. 
Top 10 worst anime betrayals, but it's FNAF. In this location, we thought that we finally had the first nice animatronic, like basically a prototype Glamrock Freddy. Baby was giving us tips on how to survive, she helped us through Ballora's gallery, she really seemed like she wanted us to live. But then, what do we get for trusting her? Scooped and stuffed just like a Thanksgiving turkey. This was probably one of the most brutal things to happen to a character in the entire series, and it's all because we trusted Baby. It's because we trusted a woman. She made us feel safe, she gave us confidence, prevented us from getting killed only to use our body as a skin suit and then get kicked out of Enter Not Even a Game later, and she also took the goddamn kids. This is why I don't trust Glamrock Freddy. Baby is legit one of the reasons that I have trust issues now, and that's saying something. Like, holy damn, I could have sworn that Glamrock Freddy was going to do the exact same thing. Like, lead us down to Afton and then pull a psych. I've been working for this bag the whole time. Time to die, but he didn't. However, thanks to Baby, I still think this man is doing a long con. Source this video, whichever side it pops up on. Halfway through into number 5, Resurrected Afton. The scariest thing that Vanny did, from any real standpoint, is resurrecting Afton. From an in-universe perspective, she brought back seemingly the Earth's most prolific killer. From a story perspective, it kind of comes out of nowhere and feels forced. And in a game sense, he just looks terrifying and sends all the broken animatronics after us. And lore-wise, because, well, Afton's back. However, he's also not entirely back considering how this version is actually finally dead, seemingly, but only functional because of the coded part of Afton's brain is in him. I don't f no, this is why it's scary. We all figured that Afton was gonna come back this time around, okay, and understandably so, with the first trailer literally featuring an arm that every YouTuber, including us, milked for as long as they could. Whether he's actually alive again or not, this is the scariest thing that Vanny did in multiple ways. And now, it's canon in-universe that people can turn into sentient code that can then be uploaded into animatronics and people, which is a whole other can of worms that I don't wanna deal with. And at four, killing Vanny. In the Phaser Blast ending, you know, the one where you push the button instead of playing Princess Quest 3, Gregory ends up ordering robots to quote, disassemble Vanny, because he heard Vanny say it, uh, to disassemble Freddy. But Gregory, he knows that this is going to kill Vanny, okay? And him being willing to kill Vanny is extremely messed up, especially if this kid is meant to be 10 or 11, which everyone seems to believe, even though he's like the size of a four year old, that's a whole other issue. But like, you could argue that he doesn't know any better, okay, but Gregory clearly does know better. This kid is easily able to destroy all three animatronics without a moment's hesitation, and then use their upgrades on Freddy. He can drive a goddamn truck, and then he's just willing to kill Vanny, like I said, despite actually seemingly knowing her like we see in the best ending. And he burns Burn Trap multiple times in an attempt to stop him from taking control over Freddy. So like, what the absolute living hell is this kid doing, and how is he so nonchalant about this whole thing? This kid kills Vanny and then only gets emotional when he has to go talk to a destroyed Freddy robot. Like, dude. There is a literal human bleeding out right next to you. You can say, like, he was doing it in self-defense, but he's not, okay? Self-defense requires the proper use of force. This kid could have said, stop Vanny, restrain Vanny, ah, uh, I don't know, tackle Freddy. Not freaking disassemble, okay? Like, I get that it's fresh in your mind, but dude, they literally were tearing the limbs off of Freddy in that scene. We see what happened to Freddy with his whole chest and stuff just being open. Like, imagine that, but soft, fleshy, easily broken, because, you know, it's not metal, human. Yeah, you're not panicking about literally anything else. You just say something that doesn't involve a human dying, okay? Especially if you know her. Gregory commits murder in one of the endings to this game. Does nobody find that a cause for concern? Getting close to the end in at number three, killed his kids. You know what, sure, he may not have done it directly, but Afton's actions ended up resulting in all three of his kids' demises. Him killing Charlotte got Fredbear's clothes, which resulted in him having to open circus babies, which then made him have to dust off the baby animatronic and the other fun times, which were designed to kill in the first place, more on that in a second. Then, Baby ends up grabbing and crushing Elizabeth, resulting in her possessing Baby, even though Afton should have and probably could have easily put a blacklist on these animatronics. 
animatronics like, hey, don't kill these, they come from my loins. He super powered the jaw of the Fredbear animatronic in case he had to use it as a backup kill suit and then used it at the new Freddy Fazbear's which ends up crushing his youngest son's skull since it was not a spring lock failure, okay? All the spring locks weren't being used. It was in animatronic mode, not suit mode, so there was nothing to fail, meaning that crying child was killed by the power of the jaw. And while you could argue that that was Michael's fault, why would he think that a animatronic mouth would crush a skull? Okay, and as the suit technician, William knew what he was doing. And then he gets Michael killed when he sends him down to find his sister in sister location, which then ends up him realizing all the things that his father is doing, and then he ends up getting stuffed into Enter, and then he ends up getting stuck in FNAF 6 because he's trying to right his father's wrongs because he figured out what happened. Just, ugh. Yeah, William's actions got all three of his kids killed, okay? Just because he didn't do it with his bare hands doesn't mean that it's not his fault. All because he just wanted to kill his business partner's daughter for whatever goddamn reason. But ultimately, in number two, neglect. I find it kind of funny how the worst things that characters have done in this series come from actual humans. And you know what? This might make a few Henry stands mad, but it has to be said. If you're suspicious of your business partner and concerned for your daughter's well-being, you don't just give her a special bracelet that makes her a priority to the one security robot that you have. Especially when that bot can be easily disabled by just putting a couple of boxes on top of it. No, you keep her at home. You keep an eye on her as much as you can. You know, in this scenario, being a helicopter parent is okay because her life is actually in danger. And you should be doing that anyways because, you know, she's like three years old. You don't give her a bracelet then let her run amongst the big kids at the pizza place where she then gets locked outside of and killed. Dude. No. How did she even get locked outside? How is this possible? Like, how could that even happen? Neglect. This man put a green bracelet on his three-year-old daughter and said, That's enough! And then neglected her, hoping that a green band would be enough. Dude, what the actual hell? Especially when the man you think may hurt her is the one who built the goddamn animatronics in the first place and knows exactly how to disable it when the time comes. The worst thing Henry has done was straight up get his daughter killed. He suspected William and then didn't report it to the cops until his daughter died, okay? He could have at least gotten a conspiracy charge or had after an under observation, could have gotten him looked at by the cops so that his daughter would at least be safe for the time being. And then he thinks so that a bracelet is enough to keep her safe. Thanks to an animatronic that William had designed. It was Afton Robotics after all. God damn, just move. And finally, in a number one, they started everything. We can joke all we want about how Afton has a hardcore bloodlust in this series, but his desire for human destruction has been there since the start. Thanks to the fast facts found in FNAF AR's files, we learned that the Funtime robots, the one used in Sister Location, were actually some of the first robots that Afton made. Not necessarily the exact first, but among the first. And that's when they built the special containment chambers inside to store away items, which we all know is code for a child storage tank that we can actually see inside the fun times when you look at their blueprints. So this means that Afton has been wanting to kill kids since before his kids died. Hell, maybe even before they were born, depending on when this actually takes place in the timeline, which at this point is as simple as like my feelings for Vanessa, which is not simple at all. His desire to kill has caused me enough suffering in real life, let alone in the games. So yeah, definitely the worst thing a FNAF character has done, but I'm still gonna blame Scott. That's all the time we have for today, friends. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been and shall remain Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video. I need a breather.